Take it away, Gabby. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. My name is Gabrielle Salib, and uh, the focus of my interdisciplinary studies degree is human centered computing. And before I begin, I'd really love to thank my mentors, who really I couldn't have gone about my project without any of their guidance, and as well as the, the many uh, supporters at INDS, and NSF was great for <laughs> lending some money, um, and the prototyping and design lab, everyone, all of my grad student mentors um, were so helpful, and uh, post-grad student mentors. All right. I'd like to begin by introducing you all to the Makerspace. Makerspaces are a place where uh, three um, particularly important things happen. A community comes together, building uh, all kinds of creations, anything, out of any material, using uh, technical materials that might not be accessible on their day to day. Not only that, but you have this opportunity to create using 3D printers, which are highly technical materials, but as well as uh, cardboard and, uh, and popsicle sticks and tape and LED lights. And so I'll pass around some of the 3D uh, rings we've had printed in our prototyping and design lab, as well as my makeshift wand that I made in my all in the all girls uh, oh it's it's a little sorry <laughs> i'm uh, this is this is my unmaker space <laughs> <laughs> to help put back together <laughs> maybe we shouldn't pass this one so with spaces like these why do we have trends like these in computer science women's participation has been decreasing uh, rapidly now i would like to talk about how one particular makerspace in our local area, the Digital Harbor Foundation, has uh, understood the unique qualities of bringing together um, all kinds of people into the same space and to create and empower them to continue in technical fields, particularly amongst youth. Now, some details on the Digital Harbor Foundation because of my fascination with this center. Uh, I studied this uh, nonprofit youth center in Baltimore um, that offers youth programs, mini makers for kids between uh, the ages of like five to nine. But then from nine years old, they start getting um, introduced to maker foundations as like their solid technical foundation. And then they also have advanced member courses, educator training programs for teachers in the area, maker summer camps, family make nights, free field trips for local schools in the area, and a brand new print shop employing those who uh, participated in their membership courses. So taking those technical skills and applying them to work on their day to day. Now some of the work that I actually did for my project, I did a literature review to understand what I was getting into, what others had done in our field. Um, uh, I did perform some participant observations which I learned from the field of uh, anthropology from Dr. Baird. <laughs> and um, my interviews I informed from uh, the discipline of psychology. And I performed also a technical assessment of the tools that they used in their courses uh, using the um, knowledge from education and user experience design, which incorporates a person's uh, involvement in the design of now, uh, to go deeper into some of the tasks that I did, my participant observations were particularly in the Maker Foundation courses at the Digital Harbor Foundation. It was about 14 weeks, um, twice a week for, for the youth. There was an all-girls cohort as well as a co-ed cohort. Uh, they learned skills such as Tinkercad, a 3D modeling software, Scratch, block coding, um, GIMP, which is a graphic design software, as well as uh, making 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 makings, which are an intro to circuits. I interviewed five of the girls, two from the co-ed cohort, as there were only um, three total in the co-ed cohort, and uh, three in the from the all girls cohort. And the technical assessment was based on um, whether the usability principles uh, practiced in human centered computing were truly applied in their educational software. Now, some of that related work that I was telling you about. I looked a lot into um, whether 
there's information on learning in a safe space. Um, but I often found it amongst formal education settings rather than informal education settings like a maker space. Um, meeting uh, the primary needs of the learner was imperative in understanding Mas Maslow's hierarchy of needs and how it's applied also to formal education settings as the uh, research is flowing in on maker spaces and how they can be effective um, to learning in the formal setting. And uh, another point that I was really interested in was perhaps the software that they're using wasn't truly gender inclusive. Maybe we're excluding people simply by the tools we're using. Um, and uh, so I also read into the research on tangible programming with blocks rather than simply on um, abstract coding lines. Now some of my disciplinary perspectives, I've also touched on these a bit, um, but more of the education, more specifically in education, I focused on Vygotsky's sociocultural theories of cognitive development to understand how practice and play with one another could also be a point of, of including more, uh, more different uh, diversity. Uh, in psychology, as I mentioned, um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs was an imperative theory to implement at the space, um, as well as my knowledge of, of technical uh, materials such as software design and computing constraints. It's also um, very important as I participated truly with the course. As for my scholarship of interdisciplinarity, I couldn't imagine going into this research project with only one background, one field of background. I used this instrumental interdisciplinarity where I took a pragmatic approach to this problem that we're seeing of girls maybe not feeling welcome into um, technical spaces. For example, youth are restless at the space <clears throat> and they can't focus. Now, we can borrow knowledge from Maslow's hierarchy of needs to understand that perhaps their, their basic needs aren't being met before they can reach their highly ele uh, elevated complex thought. Uh, I also utilized um, the interdisciplinary strategy of building a complex and causal explanation. As you can see, there are many fields that play into um, making a better space for, for the youth involved at DHF. Um, but lastly, um, after a really great conversation with one of my mentors in interdisciplinary studies, I realized that we are also expanding and redefining the, the design thinking process to not only technology and the development of technology, but to the evolution of creating a better space for youth in, in its inner city. So we are understanding, observing, and synthesizing, and I'm understanding more ideas, how to create a better space, how to include more people, how to make them most comfortable and meet their needs. So some of my results. I found that there was a huge empowerment in learning with those whom you identify. And this was based on my interviews with, uh, with the youth uh, in, in the, both the Maker Foundation's courses and understanding that um, they might be more effective in learning these technical skills, something that's new to them in their curriculum, if they're amongst others that they identify with. And they speak the same language. Um, their instructors were also both female, um, creating a culture of strong female uh, technical advisors. And I also learned about bridging the gap of learning uh, abstract concepts, maybe by utilizing more t tangible tools. A lot of the girls were more interested in 3D printing and modeling, which um, clues, clues us all into perhaps there's a way to transfer um, their desire to understand the tangible into the abstract, um, as some of the research that I presented earlier suggests. But maybe its implementation in our work is needed. And enabling full creative potential um, in a holistic environment, caring for their basic needs of having a snack before they begin their, their courses, or taking breaks throughout the course as, the, as it is a three hour course. Um, and staff, uh, so they, also, they always offered healthy snacks to students, and it was always um, reacted to positively. So 
So some suggestions that I would make for um, improving inclusion in youth maker spaces. Um, we've seen that there, there is a hierarchy where students uh, feel a, a growth in, um, in their bodily functions and safety in themselves and in their surroundings. Um, but then they go into like their need for belonging and love and friendship. Um, and so first by offering snacks and then by making sure that the equipment around them wasn't going to harm them and that they knew that um, was important. But then working with others around them that they felt they could belong with and identify with was uh, also imperative. Um, allowing them to continue to rise up to um, feeling prestige and esteem in technical skills. And uh, finally, to self-actualize, to understand that they have reached a point where they feel comfortable with what they've um, learned and continue um, to apply it to more of, more of the spaces in their life. Um, and so incorporating these, uh, this hierarchy was imperative in understanding that being in the location that they are in downtown Baltimore, they can be serving many, many youth of different socioeconomic backgrounds. So not assuming that they will already have come with a snack or um, have already come rested after school. As well as providing an option for girls to learn amongst other girls. Um, what we learned from Liz uh, in the presentation before me is that this, um, this mainstream culture of um, males only entering technical fields will continue on into, uh, into university courses if it's not addressed um, at a younger age, which would, would have been one of my answer to one of her questions. As well as utilizing uh, techniques that um, incorporate tangible tools for students to be involved in. And for some future work, uh, we would like to interview more youth. So I had limited time, only got five interviews, um, but then two with the staff and two with the directors of the program. Um, and we'd also like to follow youth's paths through their uh, career path because something that was important to the directors of, of the center was that they were creating a space where 